Praise the Lord. Please, you can all take your seat. We are so grateful to God for the gift of life. You and I know that without Him, we are nothing. Without God, we are nothing. I'm so grateful to God for the life of my brother, Pastor Paul, and my brother, Brother Enoch. God bless you for championing this course. And I'm so happy to always see my brother, Cece, and the wife. God bless you so much. I was so blessed by this morning session, and yesterday too was so powerful. We thank God. Can we please share a word of prayer? Almighty Father, we are so grateful to you. We thank you, O oh God, for carrying us. We pray, O oh God, that you lead us. Oh Lord, help us. Grant us understanding of your word. And let us never live here the same way we came. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said earlier, our dear sister has done more than half of my work. So, uh, in a very short moment, I'll be done. The minister who pleases God. Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 1, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shone evil. There was a man in the land of Uz. This is a testimony of a man or a human being like you and I. Where well, we go to the scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, there is something that I learned there. A lot of great examples for you and I to pick from. But none of the great prophets in the Old Testament ever said, follow me. None of them. You can go back and check to what's necessary. None of them ever said, follow me. There was only one man, and his name is Jesus Christ. He was bold enough to say, follow me. And Paul was not part of his disciples. But when Paul had an encounter with him, he also had the spirit of Christ in him and told Timothy, follow me as I follow Christ. It means that there is no perfect example. There is no perfect example in the Bible than that of Christ Jesus. Bible says one day when he was not afraid or shy of criticism. When I read the Bible carefully, when John the Baptist was baptizing the people, the Bible says the key it was full of sinners. And this man Jesus was not afraid of what people would say about him and joined the queue of sinners. He was not worried about what people were going to say about him and joined the queue of sinners. We are all gathered here in the presence of God. We are all Christians, nicely dressed. As our sister said, Holy Ghost filled. But many of us are afraid of what people will say about us. We are shy, as you said, that we will be called a Christian or a Christian. Sometimes we sit in our churches and we think that the man of God is the one ordained to perform certain functions. The Bible says Christ has given you and I the ministry of reconciliation. Now we all understand that we are all ministers of Christ. There is one truth in scripture that believers of today are refusing to accept. A very glorious truth. The book of Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 6. Bible says, We are all priests. 
Christ has made us or made us all priests. As a man seated here, as a woman seated here, you were a priest for God. We will come there. But when we read the Old Testament, we realize something. Priests do what? They offer sacrifices. And until we understand and accept that we have all been made priests and we are representative of Christ on earth, we cannot make an impact or we cannot fulfill our divine calling. Every priest is supposed to render sacrifice to God. And in our dispensation, the Bible says, offer your life. So you try. You are not supposed to wait for me or the preacher or the pastor or the general overseer before you offer your sacrifice as a priest. In your home, on the street, in the truck shop, in the Uber, as you minister as I'm doing, your life itself must be laid on the altar. When we'll read the account of the Old Testament, anytime they go to God, they want to offer a sacrifice. Some come with bulls, cattle, some even dove. As a priest, you are supposed to render a sacrifice. And today, if we want to accept that we are all priests, we are all ministers of God, then we should have it at the back of our mind and in our heart that we have a sacrifice to offer. And that sacrifice today is not wounds. Sacrifice today is not cows, but your own life. There are so many ministers in the gospel. The Bible says, God testified of Jesus. When I, anytime I read the scripture, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Anytime I read the scripture, I ask myself questions. God, can you now testify of me that this is your son, Christian, in whom I am well pleased? And I want you to put a question to yourself this afternoon. Can God testify of you? This is my daughter. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. The minister who pleases God. When we're talking about somebody pleasing God, it's simply making somebody satisfied or making somebody happy. And now we are talking about God. So simply put, making God satisfied or making God happy. And the opposite is making him sad. If you sit down, you analyze your own life, your duties that you play in church, after church, can you boldly say that you are making God happy or you are making God sad? Many of us are always in a hurry. As I said, my brother and my sister have justified. They've, they've, they've spoken enough about the subject, truth. We are always in a hurry to do something for God. It is good. It is great. It is a great thing to serve the Lord in all capacity, in all areas of life, wherever you find yourself. But brothers and sisters, there is something that is far greater. There is something that God is looking beyond your service. And that is your life. That is your life. You and I cannot fully please God unless we identify Jesus and walk with him. And you cannot properly walk with Jesus if you don't know the conditions he lays down for you to become a keen follower. The Bible says you must hate. Number two, you must put to death. Number three, you must give all. The minister who pleases God. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 10, verse 1.
First Corinthians 10, verse 1 to 5. Brother Jay, can you please help me? First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. All passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the clouds, in the cloud, and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Thank you. This is talking about the account of the Israelites when they moved from Egypt to the Promised Land. And if you read this scripture, it is telling us that for 40 years God was not pleased with them. And these are people who experience miracles. When you are talking about the greatest of miracles in the scriptures, these are the people who experience them. Bible says God went ahead of them in the night as a pillar of fire and by day as a pillar of cloud. Bible says they wore the same clothes for 40 good years. Some wore the same slippers for 40 good years. When they had no food to eat, God rained food for them. These are the people that experienced the greatest of miracles, but the Bible says God was not pleased with them. And God destroyed them. So as ministers of the gospel, it is not so much of what we do. It is not so much of the singing. We sing the preaching. We do. It is not so much about that. But it is about our life. When God told Jesus, this is my son in whom I am well pleased, he had not started ministry. For 30 good years, he was not performing yeah, miracles, yeah, preaching yeah. in the synagogue. But God was pleased with him. Now the question is, what made God pleased with Jesus even before he started ministry? It was about his life. It was about the life of Jesus. The minister who pleases God. I want us to understand that it is not about you being in a hurry to go and sweep the church. It is good. It is not about you always running to the church every Sunday. It is good. It is not about you, like I'm doing here this afternoon, sharing the word of God. It is good. But there is something more greater. And if you think that God is pleased because he answered your prayer, if you think that God is pleased because you are going to villages, sharing the gospel, winning souls. If you think that God is pleased because you can sing and angels will descend and people will be lying prostrate. I'm telling you, if you don't check your life, you'll be deceiving yourself. I know preachers whom when they are invited to preach, only get ready in the morning to preach. They will come and deliver powerfully. You will feel goosebumps all over your body. But let me tell you, they don't have a relationship with God. They don't have a relationship with God. Bible says, Enoch walked with God. When he jumped to Hebrews, God testified of him that he was pleased with him. It is not about what you do. It is about righteousness. How much do you know God as a minister? You are part of the choir. You are part of the instrumentalist. You are a preacher. You are a preacher. 
you were a general overseer of a church you were a preacher but I tell you you have not yet met Christ if I use my life as an example you remember the woman with the issue of blood Bible says there were so many people gathered around Jesus but she touched Jesus and received her miracle when we go to church we can hear words like touch Jesus and receive your miracle do you know what I got when I touched Jesus God gave me victory over anger there are so many Christians walking around God giddy, giddy, here and there up and down moving to and fro but they have not touched him I'm telling you if you touch him if you touch him I'm telling you my brother is here I used to have anger issues growing up but when I touch Jesus somebody would do something to me and somebody would be like ah, I don't need me I only here because I touched Jesus and he gave me victory over that so as a minister how can I please God you can only please God by keenly following after Jesus. By looking at Jesus, studying about Jesus, and living your life as Jesus lived. We should not be comfortable in our churches. We should not be comfortable seated here this afternoon and think that as I'm preaching, God is pleased. When we read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Bible is saying that for 40 years, God was not pleased with them. So the fact that you prayed and God answered does not mean that he's pleased. God loves everybody. And after our life here, we should not deceive ourselves. Bible says it's appointed unto man to die once and after that judgment. There is judgment. So Paul said, as we are alive, we are in this flesh. Whether we are here or outside of the flesh, we make it our aim to please God. The minister who pleases God. <laughs> are we making God happy? Or we are making him sad?
when our sister was talking, we are we are now shy. To be associated with the things of Christ. When we're talking about purity, even in the church, it's a problem. Oh God. We who are supposed to defend it. Yes, fairy. Let's read the book of Leviticus chapter 1. Verse 1 to 9. I want us to follow King. Please help me. Amen. Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. Now the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tabernacle of meeting, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any one of you bring an offering to the Lord, you should bring your offering of the livestock of the head and of the flock. Please let's follow King. If if his offering is a burnt sacrifice of the head, let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it of his own free will at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord. Then he shall put his hand on the head of the bed offering, and it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. He shall kill the bull before the Lord, and the priest Aaron's and the priest Aaron's son shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood all around on the altar that on the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of meeting and he shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire on the altar and lay the wood in order on the fire then the priest Aaron, then the priest Aaron's sons shall lay the parts, the parts, the head, and the fat in order on the wood that is on the fire upon the altar. But he shall wash it entrails, and he shall wash it entrails and And he shall wash it and chose and its legs with water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar as a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. And would you please uh, go to Romans chapter 12. If we were following keenly or carefully, verse 6, it says, And he shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. Verse 9, but he shall wash its entrails and its legs with water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar as a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to God. This was God's instruction to the people of old. They were going to offer a sacrifice. If you are bringing a bull, a dieno, oye deyan, yebesheno, meboan. So why is it that God wants us to cut it into pieces? Why would God say that? There is a reason for that. The easiest way will be tie the animal. 
Bring it there, set fire into it. It is easy. But God asking them to cut the animal into pieces was trying to tell us something. Romans 12. Romans 12, the verse 1, uh, echo. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Pause for me. Which is your reasonable? I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. I said earlier we are all priests and as priests we are mandated to offer sacrifices. In the olden days they offered bulls and look at the instruction God gave them. Now the sacrifice we are supposed to offer it is not bulls, cattle, uh, pigeons, but our very own life. So if God is telling them that before you present the bull you have to cut it into pieces before you bet it. Now, my whole being is the sacrifice of God now. So how do I understand this? As a minister of God, my head, my eyes must be laid on the altar. My lips must be laid on the altar. My heart must be laid on the altar. My hand, me In other words, I'm presenting every part of my body onto the altar to be bent. So Jesus said, if you can follow me, you have to even hate your own self. I always want us to read the Bible so that you know that I'm not being bombed in America. You remember the story of Cain and Abel? I always say this. We know that one's sacrifice was not accepted, one's own was accepted. Sometimes we interpret and say, or the kitua by. Sometimes we interpret and say, say, journey. But when you look at the thing critically, God did not accept the sacrifice of the other because he did not accept the person bringing the sacrifice. So he says, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination unto God. So as a minister, you are presenting things before the altar of God, but you yourself, you are not there. Don't be deceived. God is not pleased. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Verse 3. Genesis chapter 4. Verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Were we following? Bible says, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. And the Lord approved of Abel and then his offering. He did not respect Cain and his offering. So it's not so much about what we do, but who, who we are. There is a scripture that always strikes me anytime I read it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. The Bible says, In the last days, many will say, Lord, Lord. Do Buddhists call him Lord, Lord? Do Hindus call him Lord, Lord? No. So that scripture is not referring to unbelievers, but us as Christians, those who call him Lord, Lord. I love you, Lord. I cast you out in the name of Jesus. We are using his name. And he's saying in the last days, many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not cast out demons? A minister in your name? 
I sang in the choir in your name. I organized programs in your name. Oh, Lord, didn't you see me? I was a man, I was a man of God ministering at Soul Conference 2022. Hey, it's all about that. He said, I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. There is a secret thing that God is seeing that nobody is seeing. But then, how will God, in the midst of the people, open heavens and say to Jesus, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Even before he started ministry. So brother Charles, it's not about what we do, but who we are after doing what we are doing. So one may ask, what at all was Jesus doing that the Father was pleased with him? The Bible says in the book of John 8, he pleased God and God did not leave him. God did not forsake him. When he pleased God, he will always be with you. What at all? When Jesus was confronted with a situation of pleasing man and God, he chose to please God. So Paul said, am I now trying to please men? If by this time I'm still desiring to please men, I cannot call myself a man of God. When Jesus was confronted with a situation where he has to choose between himself and the Father, he chose to please the Father. That is what a minister who pleases God does. When Jesus was confronted with a situation of pleasing the Father and the devil, he chose to please the Father. So the Bible says he had fasted, he was hungry. The devil came to tempt him. If you say, quoting the scripture, you are the son of God. Command these stones. But he chose to please the Father. Many ministers today have, as I was saying, they've hidden the truth because of honor. The minister who pleases God always pleases the Father. Should I give you an example? Bible says when Jesus was caught and sent into the palace, Anna was waiting for him there. Because the king said, I have heard so much about him and I am waiting for him. So he wanted to see what God or Jesus could do. But that was not where he was going to show off. Many of us, because of Anna, because of fat tight, because of money, we choose to put God aside and please money. When you do that, you mean pleasing your own self. One amazing thing about Jesus was that when he was confronted with a situation where he had to choose between pleasing himself and others, he chose to please others. This is the man that we cry about. This is the man that we sing about every day. I want you to talk to your heart. Can God also testify of me, Christian? Then Brother Paul will be praying and God will say, Go to Christian. He's my son and I'm pleased with him. Oh, what a testimony. A minister who pleases God does not care so much about what people are saying so far as he will please his father. Bible speaks about Jesus that he pleased even his mother. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 51. 
Bible says, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. He was subject to his own mother. His biological mother. His biological father. Jesus did not reach a stage where we are talking about 30 years before ministry. He shone the mother. Even at the point of death, he made sure somebody cared about the mother. These are things that please God more than preaching. These are things that please God more than singing. And one important thing is he loved the word of God. Our sister was saying something. We cannot do away with choristers. We cannot do away with preachers of the gospel. But if we are a chorister, if we are an instrumentalist, if we are a preacher, and you only read the word of God when you are about to preach, you know something? You cannot live the life because the word itself is not in you. And when you are reading, because you are in a hurry, you are looking for what will bless the people, not you. So when you see words like forgive, you don't understand. You don't understand. You don't understand because you don't read it for yourself. You read it to come and preach. So when Jesus himself has told you whom you are supposed to be a disciple of, tells you forgive, tells you do not curse, you still go ahead and curse because you don't understand. Bible says at the age of 12, he was walking with the Spirit. And he stayed behind. When they were looking for him, they were not finding him. They found him in the house of God. And what was he doing? He was studying the word of God. Because at that time, they did not have the Bible as we are holding our hands. So he went in there to study. That is one of the reasons why even before he started ministry, God could testify about him and say, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. I have come to a stage to understand when you have an encounter with Jesus, I'm telling you, and it's not superficial, I'm telling you, there will be testimonies in your own life Oh Jesus, what a savior. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. His name shall be called Jesus because he will save. Oh, he will save us from our sins. So when we meet Jesus, the sin that you used to love, you don't love it anymore. When you come into engage, when you come to engage Christ. What you used to do, you do them no more. The Ananka, a young fellow with his son, was a seer and no compo. God was pleased with Jesus because he loved the word and he studied it for himself. I always tell my brother, I'm not in a hurry to go and share the word of God. Though. There was a brother of mine, his name is Andrew. I always tell him that. I'm not in a hurry. I want to know him. I want to experience him. Because Matthew 21, verse 7 says, In the last days they will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not sing in the church? Did we not come so early to arrange the chairs? And you tell them, I do not know you. But what power were they operating with? So the minister who pleases God makes time for the word of God. The minister who pleases God loves the things of God. The minister who pleases God respects his or her parent. I 
Our sister said, half truth. By the God's grace, I'm a pastor. Now, we are taking the responsibility of biological parents. And we are pushing them aside. That was not the lifestyle of Jesus. I'm telling you, that was not the lifestyle of Jesus. So as the song says, Maminye Sew. We perceive me yet to sell Jesus. This year, the theme is so strong. I believe we are learning a lot. But it shouldn't be that we came, we were impressed. It shouldn't be that we came, we were happy. It shouldn't be that we came, we received chills in our bodies. And we go. Sorry. And we go. When I move out of my community, and I walk around. Sometimes the things I see, I cry within me. All oh, these people are Christians. All oh, these people are Christians. As sister said, we say, oh, so far as I am saved, I am saved. <coughs> it doesn't matter what I do. My brother, you have not sat down to stand the word of God. You have to present your head to the altar. Your eye to the altar. Your tongue to the altar. Oh Jesus. So if my tongue is on the altar, how can I curse? If my tongue is on the altar, how can I tell somebody created in the image of God that we are poor? You are an animal. Oh God. I have been referred as a dog before. Do I resemble a dog? So the person who, who said I'm a dog. Is that person's tongue on the altar? This is just an example. You are fortunate. You've gone to school. You're an accountant. You are using your hand. Our sister said we don't read the book of Revelation. When we read Revelation, it talks about receiving the mark of the beast. And people are saying barcodes. People are doing so many things. <laughs> Bible talks about 666. And we are, we, yeah, yeah, be free, be free. Bible says the mark of Christ is on our forehead. Do we see it? But we bear the mark of Christ. But you see, when we read Revelation, it tells you that the mark of the beast, you can either take it on your hand or on your forehead. On your forehead simply means publicly you proclaim that you were a worshiper of Satan. On your hand means secretly. So you dress nicely, but secretly you are serving the Lord. So many people have received it, but they don't know because they are waiting for barcodes. Oh, Jesus. Beloved, I came this afternoon to tell you and to encourage you that you are a priest. We are all priests. It doesn't matter your gender. You are a priest of God. And every priest is mandated to offer a sacrifice to God. And in our dispensation, the sacrifice you are supposed to offer is not animals, but your own body. From your head to your toe. Every day, every minute. So, where do you go? Onaino de kohen. Onaino de kohen. Opemika giliki. Hey. Sometimes people think that oh you're Christian here, or you're Christian here, or you're Kulu. They don't know. 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 Please. You are mandated to make a sacrifice. And today, you are not going to the market to buy bulls or cattle. Today, you are living here knowing that. The sacrifice you're supposed to lay on the altar is your own self. We find ourselves in a dispensation where people are giving, giving, sowing seed, dashing their cars, <laughs> hey, Jesus, dashing things, dashing lamps. They are all good, don't get me wrong. But they themselves, they are lost, they don't know. They are lost and they do not know. Do you know what I work with? Matthew 27, Matthew 7, verse 21. That is what I walk with. 
Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Every day. I tell my young boys when I meet them. You see, say me did me was a sisua a year. They will say a life well lived. But to me, they are all good. But a life well lived is when you can enter into glory with your father. At the end of the day, when you are lying or laying in the casket, you wouldn't want people to say, oh, he had this. You don't want people to say, oh, he was doing this. And you're now sure at the end of the day, so please, let's keep that day in mind. I want us to be on our feet and pray a short prayer. That God will raise remnants in every corner, in every society. People who will be fed. People who will desire to please God. People who will not be shy when they are confronted with questions. People who will not run away from the truth but will defend it always. Let us lift our prayer. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. We are before you, King of Kings. We are before you, Lord of Lords. We pray in the name of Jesus. That you, O Lord, will raise remnant, O God. In every part of our cry, O God. Raise, O God, remnant, O God. In our societies, in the name of Jesus. Lift up prayer. Lift up prayer. Lift up prayer. Oh Lord, raise people, O God, who will stop fighting. Raise people, O God, who bring glory to your name. Raise men and women who will not be ashamed of the gospel. Raise men and women who will not be ashamed of the truth. Raise men and women who will spend time, sincere time with your word. Oh Lord, help us, help us, O God. Help us, O God. You see, there is a lot going on. I've been fortunate to join a group who go to our secondary schools, and when you go there, your heart will break. I'm telling you, your heart will break. Secondary school, and you see, I deserve you more. There is no order. I'm telling you. A young boy can go to the school with a tattoo on his hand. Hey. Do you know why? Because we've, we've hidden the truth for Anna. We've exchanged the truth with money. We've exchanged the truth with fat tight. Oh, there is a generation that is coming and if we don't stand in, and plead that God will raise remnant who will be examples in our schools, in our homes. Remember, you were a priest as a father, as a mother in your home. If your children are going where well, go to the altar, present them, present them. I am who I am today, not because I was smart, it was because of the sacrifice of my mother. Always interceding, even when you are asleep, she will hold your leg and she will be praying. And I believe it was the prayers of my mother that has made me who I am today. Hey, like I would deviate, total deviate with a strong heart. I come at 
but my mother interceded. So if you are listening to me, watching me as a mother, I want to tell you a priest. Present all your household on the altar of God. And I tell you, God will keep them for you. God will keep them for you. God will keep them for you. God bless us so much. God bless us so much. God bless us so much. Let us place our right hand on our hands. Let's share a short word of prayer. Almighty Father, we are so grateful for a wonderful time with you. This year's School of Worship Conference has been a blessing. I pray those who are gathered here and those who are watching at home, the Lord will have a very special experience with you. And they will never ever forget this day because we are going to walk with them. They are going to allow themselves to come into their heart. And oh God, you stay in their homes and you help our dear nation Ghana. We give you glory. We give him praise for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.